Strong feelings are fine. It's the overreactions that mess us up. I love this quote from American psychologist Albert Ellis. It describes the passion we have to make improvements. It describes the pitfalls of impulse. Situations such as a crisis, a pandemic, or even the emergence of a disruptive innovation impact our systems and processes. These create either a looming threat or a direct change to the way you do business. Problems arise almost immediately. I'm Brad Hollingsworth, a master black belt, here to guide you with structure for collaboration in challenging times. Think about these scenarios. Your processes no longer meet the expectations of your customers and stakeholders, especially when they limit their own physical interaction with you. The throughput capacity of your systems are suddenly reduced due to the lack of availability of workforce. The threat, uncertainty, and anxiety lead us to make short-sighted decisions, explains Art Markman in his article, Slow Down to Make Better Decisions in a Crisis. Exploring the onset of the coronavirus pandemic, he concludes those quick actions may reduce some of your anxiety in the short run, but they are likely to create more problems than they solve. You're probably wondering, how do we slow down? We have problems, they feel urgent. What if we have too many cooks in the kitchen? How do we avoid short-sighted decisions? Simple, we collaborate with a structured approach to problem solving, Lean Six Sigma. Consider this example, healthcare providers in a rural Appalachian community believe transportation is a problem. A nurse shares a story about an emergency room patient that arrived by ambulance and has no ride home. Another nurse shares a story about making 50 phone calls to arrange transportation for a patient to get to their doctor's appointment. A caseworker shares a story of a patient ready to be discharged from the hospital, waiting in bed for hours because the family can't pick them up until they get off work later that night. It feels like a problem. It sounds simple at face value. Everyone has a basic understanding of transportation. Just react and fix it. How would you react? Take a minute and think of at least two or three solutions. I've seen reactions to these feelings before. Let's examine common reactions and their pitfalls. Hire more people. I hear this all the time. In this case, buy vehicles and hire drivers. Contact with a contract with a taxi cab service. Request rides on Uber or Lyft. Let's take a step back. We didn't find out if there really is a problem. These stories could simply be outliers that occur every few months or even years. We don't know the magnitude of it. We didn't find the root cause of the problem. How are we going to know if it actually made an improvement? Think about the consequences of overreacting. What if the solution doesn't solve the problem? What are we gonna do with the people we just hired and the vehicles we purchased? Turns out the taxi cab service doesn't have the capacity to address the root cause we'll discuss later. Uber and Lyft don't have legitimate capacity in the region to transport patients. It seems like our reactions might have significant overhead costs or sim they are simply ineffective. Key fundamentals in Lean Six Sigma include a five-step methodology. 
cross-functional teams and the value of the people that do the work. The five steps are simple. They probably remind you of the scientific method. Today we'll refer to each step as a phase. The first phase is define. Albert Einstein once said, the formulation of a problem is often more essential than its solution. The team has to understand the problem before moving forward. Divine provides our first check and balance to prevent short-sightedness. The next phase is measure. Here the team answers questions such as, what is the magnitude of the problem? How bad is it? What is the current state? What actually happens? The team now understands the current situation more than just a few stories shared in the case study. Here is another set of checks and balances to avoid overreactions. Analyzes the third phase. The team finds the root cause of the problem with facts and data. The facts and data provide yet another check and balance to limit overreactions. In our case, the root cause is people miss their appointments because they don't plan far enough in advance to make transportation arrangements. They often call for help the day of the appointment. Improve is the fourth phase where solutions are selected and implemented. In our example, the solution is arranging transportation for patients at risk of needing it. It turns out a regional transit already had the software and the capacity available to meet the needs. It turns out that our reaction was an overreaction. Hiring more drivers was unnecessary and very costly. Control is the final phase where the team develops a plan to sustain the improvements. The structure of five phases eliminates the impulsive overreactions and short-sighted decisions. It also creates a system for collaboration. Lean Six Sigma breaks down organizational silos. A cross-functional team is formed during the first phase of each project. A team leader is identified, often a green belt. The leader's role is to guide the team through the five phases and ensure everyone contributes along the way. We all know what happens when we assume something. Spell it out. A fundamental value in Lean Six Sigma is that the people who do the work know it best. These are the people on your problem solving teams. Empower them to problem solve together. What better way is there to promote collab collaboration? Now you might be asking, how do I create structure for collaboration? Or maybe you want to learn more. The Ohio University Voinovich Academy for Excellence in Public Service offers Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt and Green Belt courses. Contact myself or Jay Johnson. Remember, strong feelings are fine. It's the overreactions that mess us up. Collaborate with a structured approach, such as Lean Six Sigma, solve problems.